Russian drones needed for target identification and artillery guidance, as well as FPV, were unable to function. The rapid Ukrainian offensive in the Kursk region took Russia and Western analysts by surprise. In a few days, Ukrainian troops captured more territory than the Russians had in several months. The success appears to have been achieved by mastering a new style of warfare, writes Forbes. The Ukrainian armed forces have reportedly disabled Russia's network of aircraft type reconnaissance drones, effectively blinding the command. This may have been done with the help of new FPV interceptors linked to air defense radars. Secondly, during the temporary shutdown of surveillance, short-range jammers were deployed to the front line. They were programmed based on data previously received from electronic warfare intelligence. They learned the main frequencies of our border radio networks, drone control frequencies, and prepared powerful jammers that suppressed our communications, writes a Russian blogger quoted by War Translated. This was possible because the area was considered low priority and was not equipped with the latest equipment. In Ukraine, the drone war against jammers has become a constant arms race, with new jammers appearing for every step taken to evade jamming frequencies. It appears that the drones in this sector were not up to modern standards. As a result, Russian drones, needed to target identification and artillery guidance as well as FPV, were unable to function. Even the dangerous Lancet loitering munitions were partially affected. Drones are the primary means of stopping armored attacks. Recent data suggests they account for two-thirds or more of tank destruction and video footage shows entire armored assault forces being knocked out one by one by successive FPV strikes long before they reach enemy positions. By concentrating sufficient jamming capabilities in the Kursk sector, Ukraine neutralized Russian drones, allowing its armored vehicles to cross open territory without being destroyed. But how did they cope with Russian troops dug in behind defensive lines that had been built for two years? Analysts ask. Ukraine has filled the skies with its own drones, a constant barrage of precision-guided UAVs flying in swarms. OSINT analyst Roy notes that in recent weeks, Ukraine has used powerful drone bombs to punch holes in the top cover of Russian trenches and dugouts. Experienced FPV pilots can fly through these holes and clear the trench below. Perhaps significantly, some of the footage shows Ukraine's new dive bomber drones. Russian troops are rapidly seizing more and more territory in Ukraine, taking advantage of cracks in Ukrainian defenses caused by a lack of forces and mistakes by military leadership. Russian President Vladimir Putin's main goal on the battlefield this year is to seize as much land as possible, senior Ukrainian officials told the Financial Times. Our defenses are cracking, one official said, warning that Russian forces had made tactical gains in the Donetsk region and that further offensives were likely unless the situation changed. Thus, according to an estimate by the Finnish military research group Blackbird Group, the area of territory captured by Russian troops since the beginning of May is almost twice that which the Ukrainian military recaptured during its summer offensive a year ago. According to their data, the Ukrainian armed forces liberated about 321 square kilometers between June the 1st and September the 1st, 2023, or an average of 24 square kilometers each week. At the same time, Russian troops captured about 592 square kilometers between May the 3rd and August the 2nd of this year, or more than 45 square kilometers each week. Over the past month, the Russians have managed to capture several key positions and terrain features, while the situation for the Ukrainians in these areas is steadily deteriorating. Analysts note, Analysts and soldiers say Russia has also taken advantage of Ukrainian miscommunication and poor rotation on the battlefield to make rapid advances in several cases, particularly around Pokrovsk and Turetsk. However, as the Financial Times notes, the recent improvement in Ukrainian firepower has not yet had an impact on the battlefield. Experts say that the main reason for Russia's continued progress is the acute shortage of men, especially infantry, in Ukraine. Moreover, Russia's strategy of expanding the front line in the Kharkiv region has further stretched Ukraine's forces and left them with fewer reserves to respond to Russian advances toward Pokrovsk, Chasovyar and Turetsk, notes Rob Lee a fellow in the Eurasia program at the Foreign Policy Research Institute, 
Experts expect the Russians to become more active in the Donetsk region this month and try to advance towards Konstantinovka, which will become the main target after the fall of Chasov Yar. As Franz Stefan Gedi, a research fellow at the International Institute for Strategic Studies think tank in London, points out, Ukrainian commanders may have to reconsider the concept of active defense. At the same time, some officials are optimistic that Russia's advance will slow as its forces move closer to major cities where Ukrainian defenses are stronger 